Welcome to the APFCB webinar on the role of clinical laboratories in COVID-19. In this lecture, Dr. Miswar Fataha will be talking on the method evaluation and quality control for nucleic acid amplification test of SARS-CoV-2. Welcome everyone and thank you to join today. It's a great honor to me to contribute to this virtual workshop. Thanks to Dr. Tony Bedwick as the Chair of Education and Laboratory Management Committee, APFCB, and Dr. Roger Suhestra as a convener of this event, and thanks to Indonesian Association for Clinical Chemistry to propose us as a, as a speaker today. Thank you very much for inviting me to discuss about method evaluation and quality control uh, nuclear acid testing SARS-CoV-2. We will discuss about the, uh, the quality of molecular testing for SARS-CoV-2 as an introduction. And the second, we will discuss about how to evaluate molecular testing for SARS-CoV-2. And we will discuss about the quality control, more detail about molecular testing for SARS-CoV-2. Uh, testing. This is a key event, the 2019 new COVID outbreak. It's the more important for us as laboratory medicine as uh, at 10 January, the first sequencing, uh, SARS CoV 2 already available, and after that, uh, we know this is a new virus, a new disease, and not far from after sequencing, wall sequencing, we are, uh, PCR testing available because we know the primer setup and uh, we can make a primer after that. This is a SARS-CoV structure. Uh, this is uh, some more important, some very important uh, target for testing, like OF1AB, RDRP, or between OF1AB and N, N gene uh, and S gene. Is some of uh, uh, this is uh, molecular target is very important to us uh, to to detect the SARS-CoV-2. This is different type of analyte or labor testing related to COVID-19. We can detect by RNA, antigen, antibody, host response, and potential susceptibility. And today we will focus discuss about the quality of RNA uh, testing with uh, real-time PCR. If we compare quality uh, between these three tar targets, antibody, antigen, molecular testing, molecular testing have higher sensitivity and specificity compared with antibody and antigen. It's why IFCC uh, recommendation, RT-PCR as a diagnosis tool, and for other tests like for antibody, can be for epidemiological surveillance. An etiology diagnosis of SARS-CoV-2 infection is currently based on collection of per respiratory specimen and using real-time PCR. It's why very important to standardize, to maintain the quality of real temperature because this is now become a theology of diagnosis SARS-CoV-2. This is uh, some target in different laboratory already developed uh, one from CDC China using ORF1AB and RDRP from Germany and in total gene E and from Thailand and from uh, CDC USA using N1 uh, gene. Because we look at, this is very different uh, target for each uh, country they develop. So uh, IFCC recommendation uh, about the gene target, uh, there is currently insufficient evidence to get definition advantage of selecting, uh, say based on specific uh, SARS-CoV-2 RNA target, uh, like for gene N, A, I, RDRP or OR1AB genes. Because some publications have compared this analytical and clinical performance of molecular assay uh, targeting different uh, SARS CoV 2 uh, and demonstration inconclusive finding. Gene target specificity uh, lack of harmonization between primer and probe set limits, robust comparison of the assay sensitivity between different platforms. So, uh, IFCC uh, recommend a site for molecular diagnostics should employ minimum two targets and mini to minimize the risk of false negative. 
Uh, this is some technology uh, available for such cop to testing, especially for the viral detection. One can uh, with uh, technology with the real-time PCR. This is uh, more common today, and lamp technique and using uh, CRISPR cas uh, the new uh, technology uses uh, CRISPR, and we can use for sequencing uh, like for NGS or NGS and clinical laboratory should select. Uh, an appropriate nucleic acid testing based on uh, desired clinical application for screening, diagnosis, monitoring, uh, to keeping in mind the, that performance of current POCT assay have not been well demonstrated. So the first important is how to uh, select method and validation. If we look at here, this is a routine uh, test processing we have a red cement wire specimen, perform test, check quality, statistical, and report results. But before we running routinely, we need to establish first the test to with select and evaluate the test and select method analysis and validate and implement if they have. And after uh, we running routine and they have problem, so we need to maintain the uh, a prevent uh, problem, so we implement method and then back to perform the test. So we will discuss two parts today about uh, how to evaluate and how to maintain quality. Uh, this is an uh, important consideration in molecular testing for validation and verification qual uh, before we running routinely. After we running routinely, we need to maintain quality control. And after we run uh, several times, we need to proficiency testing. So this is three different, it's very important in to maintain quality in molecular laboratory. And some guidelines now are available in the world, uh, especially from uh, CLSI. We can uh, use uh, this guideline to validate. Now we will discuss a more detail about how to evaluate molecular testing for SARS-CoV-2. We know uh, a lot of tests are available now for molecular testing. So not easy to choose which better for us. And because some reagent producers are not very well known by clinical level scientists today. And this is how we choose the kit in normal condition. Mostly we choose based on the uh, cost, limit detection, measurement range, sample type, interference, uh, sample volume, electricity, dimension, uh, water re requirement regulation, Turn around time, sensitivity and specificity, traceability, and we look at based on proficiency testing about to, to look at the quality of the uh, kits and stability of region, robustness instrument, affability of uh, instrument and region, the software and reference method. But in pandemic, we have a different uh, way to choose the, the kits. Like affability is very important because not kit available now. <laughs> quality of the kit, the cost, estimate number of sample per day, positioning test, it hospital based or for diagnosis or for surveillance, and government recommendation met with our current facility. Uh, and this needs skill or knowledge that for medical laboratory science. This kit, LDT, RUO, or IPD kit, so we need to choose based on uh, literature and number publications. And we need to compare and verify. Uh, I give you uh, some tips if you want to, uh, before your ev evaluation, you need to summary the kit we will, you will choose. You need to summary for like a country, which producers, because some country maybe it's not easy to import from our country, and producer, gene target, LOD, affiability of CT cutoff, uh, internal control, PCR platform, match, match with current facility, match with wide range uh, viral transform medium, because sometimes very close only for one PTM. If you are referral uh, laboratory, the best is if you have match with wide range PTM. Open or close or POCT system, number of super test, uh, the throughput for two hours, and number of manual staff, regulatory status, and number of public. This is you need to summary before you just uh, kit. 
So we'll discuss about the validation and verification. Validation as confirmatory by examination and provision objective evidence that particular requirement for a specific intended use can consistently fulfill. So this validation actually applies to uh, test modified non-wave or LDT testing. And for, for verification, uh, so we, for in this uh, presentation, we will discuss more detail about the verification or the, uh, validation. Broadly as confirmatory through the provision of objective evidence, that specified requirement have been fulfilled. Apply to unmodified or non-wave, uh, moderate or high complexity test that have been cleared or approved by FDA. So verification of laboratory assay is procedure that provide objective evidence that the performance characteristic of the test fulfilled specimen requirement. And while validated uh, verification is confirmed, the performance characteristic of the test are adequate for the intended use in our laboratories. So verification of regulatory approved assay, uh, we need to uh, laboratory responsible for determining performance of the test results to evaluate of analytical performance and evaluate for clinical performance. So during the evaluation, the selected assay should be assessed by verifying whether the assay meets the manufactured claim and whether it meets the laboratory set requirement based on assay use. Ideally, the assay should uh, be evaluated in two parts uh, or analytical performance and clinical performance. And now uh, available three guidelines in emergency use authorization for evaluation SARS-CoV-2. Uh, uh, the newest guideline from IFCC, International Federation of Clinical Chemistry and Laboratory Medicines, and from FDA, from American Society for Microbiology. Uh, this guidance is not meant for validation of laboratory development tests or for validation newest tests by manufacturer. Uh, but we focus on verification. Laboratories should verify the analytical performance, a claim of regulatory approved molecular testing, including in the parameter uh, described here in next slides before routine uh, use. Uh, what we need to monitor, what we need to evaluate, uh, this is analytical parameter recommended for clinical laboratories for when verifying a regulatory approved commercial SARS CoV to say, first, we need to determine the limit of detection and reportable range, but this is only for quantitative only. The future if SARS-CoV-2 as quantitative, we need to report uh, ver uh, for verify the reportable range and imprecision, accuracy, and analytical specificity. Uh, acceptability criteria are need to modify depending on laboratory standard regulatory and accreditation requirement. We will discuss more detail about the, how we determine the limit of detection. Limit detection means how many target RNA copies per reaction can one reliable detect with 95% confidence. So LOD is uh, lowest actual concentration of analyte in specimen that can be consistently detected with acceptable precision, but not necessary quantified. So how we doing this limit detection test? Actually for emergency use authorization molecular assay, limit detection is not required, but uh, recommended, uh, it's recommended when possible. So how we, we do it? A five sample in the range of the climate LOD and measure 8 to 12 replication over five days. So uh, how we evaluate? We can make employee probit regression analysis to establish uh, concentration at which 95% of sample return uh, positive. Alternatively, we define a concentration at which more than 55, 95% of sample return to positive sample. And we accept uh, if the, the uh, result more than 95% sample near LOD return to be positive. So this is example uh, 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 graph, a uh, chart. Uh, if we limit of detection using probit progression analysis. So we uh, 
if we know the concentration, we make a copies per milliliter, we convert to log number of replication, number of positive, uh, and percent of positivity, and we make a profit of the failure. So it's a, a lot of uh, a software we can use. We can use uh, analyze it for uh, additional add-on exit or uh, another software available. So now we will uh, to reportable range. Actually, this is only for quantitative. Uh, the span of test result value offered the laboratory can establish or verify the accuracy of the instrument or test system measurement responsible. How we do it? Five to seven concentration across started linear range measure two to three replicate of each concentration. So how we evaluate? This is how we evaluate. We will not discuss more detail about this because this is uh, for qualitative, uh, does not apply for this post-qualitative testing. So the more important uh, in SARS-CoV-2 verification is imprecision. Imprecision means uh, how well a given a measurement can be reproduced when a test is applied repeatedly to multiple aliquots of a single homogeneous sample. So how we do it? The positive and negative quality control sample, if they produce quantitative signal reading, the probability at concentration where the imprecision claim were made by the manufacturer. And we run five times daily for five, five days. So to evaluate, we calculate mean uh, standard deviation and CV for repeatability and within laboratory imprecision and CT value and compares again corresponding manufactured claim. So acceptability, the imprecision should fall within manufactured claim where available. A precision study for qualitative testing should uh, provide an estimate imprecision method analytical concentration near the limit detection. This is very important, near the limit detection. It's not appropriate uh, to measure the imprecision of qualitative assay to high positive sample because it's very high we can not to determine the uh, near of limit detection. It's recommended the precision be performed by different operators, either offer different shift on different day, while imprecision rep and interprecision are recommended for high complex testing Interprecision does not apply for cartridge base with uh, each cartridge independent on other cartridge. So like some of your city is uh, not apply for this uh, testing. And we need to uh, uh, verify about the accuracy. So, some laboratory may be diff uh, difficult to do this because uh, they don't have the positive sample. So how we do it? Quantified patient sample by spiking individual negative matrix with a commercial viral material are fully uh, sample should be used. And uh, how we do it, a minimum of 10 positive sample. We, in, in positive sample, including uh, five strong positive and five moderate uh, positive sample. And 10 negative uh, remnant patient specimen. Some laboratory may be difficult to access negative uh, sample, so we can use a viral transport medium, can be used as a bullet negative matrix if residual negative patient sample are not available. The internal control will be uh, negative, you need to note. The internal, neg uh, internal control will negative if you use uh, PTM, especially if the target of internal control, uh, a human gene, RNA-CP. So positive reference material can be run it. Uh, for positive reference material, we can dilute it from one to two or one to 10 uh, to be represent a strong positive sample and moderate positive sample. Uh, in option two, if we not have a contrivenient patient sample, we may, we can uh, collaborate with uh, another emerging use authorization method uh, laboratory already with a residual patient sample. 
for verification, but that lab must provide the CT. So for this, how we determine to evaluate, we determine the number of these four done results in the study of sample set, and the acceptability more than 95 percent concordance. Uh, this is how we uh, verify using residual dual patient sample uh, test by another lab, and they provide CT value first, uh, because. After we get CT failure for that lab, so we can dilute the sample every 10 fold. And we need to reminding if we diluted the sample, uh, we, uh, the CT failure will increase uh, around three cycles, initial CT failure, like this. If the uh, first, uh, if the CT failure from that lab, they improve uh, 15, if diluted 1 to 10, so the CT uh, to 18, yeah. and we can dilute it more. For CT failure starting uh, from 25, so we only dilute it three times, yes, 1 to 10 and 1 to 100. But if the CT failure uh, 30, so we, we not recommend it to use uh, this because the CT failure <coughs> become larger. So for analytical specificity, analytical specificity refers to uh, ability on a say to detect only the intended target and that quantification of target is not affected by cross-reactivity from a related or potential interfering nucleic acid specimen condition. So for analytical specificity, actually we discuss about the cross-reactivity and interference. So how we uh, doing actually this analytical specificity not required for the lab uh, uh, running with emergency use as authorization molecular assay. However, it's recommended we, if we can, if possible. How we do it? Uh, we, we need to have panel all four endemic strains of human coronavirus should be uh, assayed will be another respiratory pathogen to know the cross uh, reactivity and the sample from our chip uh, clinical sample proficiency testing or commercial uh, pathogen panel can be uh, a sample of testing and how we evaluate we calculate number of false positive for each specimen and overall negative percent agreement and acceptability is across reactivity observed uh, 100 percent negative and this is how laboratory uh, IFC recommendation about specification for clinical uh, performance. So validation with analytical and for uh, clinical performance. This is uh, IFC recommendation. Laboratory should verify the clinical performance climb of the manufacture of molecular tests in representative local population. So we need to understand the representative local population in which test is intended to be used. So when clinical samples, like from, uh, we repeat, a positive, positive on gold standard assay, clinical criteria are not available because it's not easy to get the uh, sample with a, a proven a clinical sample, uh, quantified specimens should be used. So laboratory uh, should follow the standard, the start guidelines when designing and reporting clinical performance studies. Uh, to evaluate of clinical performance uh, for SARS-CoV-2 RNA testing, we know the ascertainment of clinical performance is more challenging as it requires an appropriate reference or comparator method with sufficient analytical and clinical sensitivity, a comparison of new suboptimal assay with established about, but of suboptimal assay may be mislead conclusion regarding the clinical performance of the new method. Uh, their lack of true independent gold standard knows uh, for detecting SARS-CoV-2 and the use of composite reference standard or the WHO definition of disease that combined with clinical and other test information for diagnosis SARS-CoV-2 infection. And other alternative approach use quantified clinical sample for assessing clinical performance. But uh, now mo mostly the lab utilize this uh, if they have a uh, difficult to get a, a 
through a clinical sample and challenge when, when I follow up, uh, clinical performance is first, quantified clinical specimen testing for SARS-CoV-2 are typically leftover specimens spilled with RNA or inactivated viral, uh, thus a poor proxy for actual clinical specimen. So, and manufacturer package instead often include a claim a clinical performance, but do not provide sufficient information regarding the population. These limitations are important to consider when we verify one factor clinical performance claim. And that's the recommendation from IFT. I will uh, inform about the how FDA guidelines validation study recommendation based on technological principle test for molecular diagnostic, limit detection, clinical evaluation, inclusivity, cross reactivity, and technical clinical testing must uh, do it. For antigens, we not uh, discuss today for this. And more detail about the, how FDA evaluation validation of molecular testing is we need to doing LOD, pre replicate per concentration with inactivated period, and actual patient specimen. And then confirm the final concentration with 20 replicates. For clinical evaluation, a minimum 30 positive specimen and 30 negative specimen and alternative contribute uh, clinical specimen by, by spike at concentration one to uh, two times LOD, 95% agreement positive and 100% agreement for negative specimen. For inclusivity in silico analysis indicating the percent identifiement again publicity available such cov to sequence. For cross reactivity, common respiratory flora, normal flora in uh, respiratory, other viral pathogen, and concentration uh, more than uh, 1 billion CFU per milliliter bacteria. Except for SARS coronavirus and MERS coronavirus, can be accomplished by in silico analysis. For clinical testing, confirmatory of the first five positive and first five negative clinical semen using emergency use authorized laboratory. So you can uh, compare with this uh, for clinical testing. And how we calculate performance characteristic, we can calculate by the uh, percent positive agreement, percent negative agreement, and percent overall agreement. So we make uh, uh, table 2.2, uh, like for this, we need to uh, number of results both uh, test positive, number of results uh, both negative, and number of results where the candidate method is positive but comparable with negative. So PPA, PNA may be useful for judging the acceptable uh, candidate method. But for percent overall agreement, less useful because it may be high even the, when PPA or PNA may be low. And this is uh, how we can calculate if you have a, a comparable for these two methods. And American Society for uh, Microbiology already have two uh, guidelines too. I am not more detail about this because I'm not. And how to evaluate if we have multiplex pathogen panel? For multiplex pathogen panels, uh, if, if we compare here, uh, we have two conditions. SARS-CoV-2 have been added to separate reaction, so we, the verification can be performed on the SARS-CoV target alone. For SARS-CoV to incorporate with other target assay in the panel, so the SARS-CoV must be verified, and additionally the performance of the say for the other target that is multiplex with must be verified by running low level positive control for those target and demonstration no loss detection and by addition of the SARS-CoV thing. And we need to, uh, when we need to revalidation, validation of analytical method uh, actually is one time process unless the condition under which method was developed has changed. A revalidation required existing method is modified by additional of new sample for change in critical component reagent that may affect the assay. And 
positive control and verification. Or we need sometime we need to verification the cut off. The positive control that is taken through extraction process may dually serve of both extraction control and amplification control. For multiplex process, uh, must be bullet control that contain all analytes by use or individual control or rotated after loss a specimen validation of all target. And we need to ver uh, verification cut off of every six months after change the major system component, after load change of all reagent, and after failure of quality control uh, or after major maintenance. So now we will discuss about the quality control on the molecular testing. Uh, how to maintain the quality and improvement? First, we need to comply with this. A procedure manual, nuclear acid extraction and specimen storage, how to design laboratory, laboratory practice, control for positive, negative, amplification, sensitivity and external control, test validation, maintenance of equipment, competency of personnel, and proficiency testing and accreditation. This is Q, uh, quality assurance element for standard operation procedure, document, quality control, quality indicator monitoring, and external quality assurance. And for standard operating procedure, we need to have this manual of producers for agent receipt, storage and preparation, instrument operation and calibration log, instrument maintenance and repair log, freezer log, inventory log, method for taking and recording data, association form, result and report form, and many protocol and procedure are regulated by FDA, so we need to follow that and reporting to government. Uh, quality control in molecular diagnosing is slightly uh, different with uh, clinical chemistry testing, but because sometimes uh, maybe most important is not we not use uh, like Westbier multi root so uh, analytical statistically mostly not practical. Uh, this is uh, some difference from uh, what is in QC MD. In general, QC in molecular testing is uh, QC requirement must be performed in accordance with national, international regulation or accreditation requirement and the user laboratory standard quality control procedure. Quality control procedure intended to monitor reagent and assay performance. Uh, Third, the test positive control prior to running diagnostic sample uh, with each new kit lot to ensure all reagent and kit components are working properly. The extraction control must be processed through nucleic acid isolation per batch of specimen to be tested. <coughs> Always include negative sample control and appropriate positive control and amplification and detection rate. We will discuss more detail about uh, the type of control. So these uh, three types of control. One, positive control, and second, internal control, and the third, negative control. Positive control and internal control to detect false negative, and negative control to detect false positive. This good molecular control for SARS-CoV-2, first, sampling control to know the adequate of sampling code. And amplification control for we need a positive and negative control. And third, extraction control for a say with extraction phase, a control that is capable to detecting error in the extraction process. And we need inhibitor control if reaction inhibition is a significant source of false negative result. So we need the control. And we need to note if we use positive control, try to use weak positive control to avoid contamination. And this is four types of control. Positive control uh, to use to verify that PCR master mix and reagent were prepared correctly to produce amplification of the target nucleic acid. Negative control are used to verify that no contamination nucleic acid has been introduced into master mix or into sample during sample processing. No template control is to use verify that no contamination nuclear acid has been introduced in the, into master mix. Internal control used to verify that no false negative 
due to inhibitor or loss RNA at extraction process or inadequate samples. So positive control, uh, for control material we can from synthetic commercial control and from, from residual patient sample or from genomic or in vitro transcript RNA but this is not recommended because uh, due to the stability. Quality, quantitative control is more recommended compared with qualitative uh, uh, control. The use quantified or inactivated uh, QC material is more preferable. And the target should contain every SARS-CoV-2 target detected by the FDA. So two type internal control, uh, Exogenous, exogenous internal control, like a bacteriophage. The exogenous nucleic acid has added before nucleic acid extraction, and to confirm that nucleic acid was adequately extracted and amplification. And the second type of internal control are endogenous internal control, like a human RNA-CP, endogenous internal control internal control with human clinical specimen to confirm that nucleic acid adequate something, this is different with uh, exogenous, and extracted and amplification well. So RNA internal control can be competitive or non-competitive sequence with a target, but mostly uh, kit available now using non-competitive sequence. This type of control, uh, Exogenous, we need to add to positive control, negative control, and for each sample. So we can monitor extraction process. If the extraction process, they have inhibit, uh, they lost RNA, they lost RNA, so the, we can monitor from exogenous. Or we can use endogenous uh, uh, internal control, endogenous mostly only for primer and probe we add here, so no additional to the sample, and the target with human uh, RNA target. After this, positive control with IC, negative control with IC, sample with IC, we combine with uh, RT-PCR mix, and as additional, uh, optional, we can use positive control and no template control. It's better if we have all of this control in one test, but I think it's not all kit available uh, uh, produced for all this control in the one kit. So how we utilize this control? For specimen and collection, to know the specimen properly taken, specimen properly managed, a storage and shipping, so we, for this we can control with IC human target or endo, endogenous uh, internal control. For RNA extraction, we need to control RNA properly extracted. A cross contamination during extraction, so we can control with endo, exogenous internal control, endogenous internal control, and negative uh, no, no template control. So to control the amplification target, uh, the question in amplification target, RT-PCR work properly or not? There are PCR inhibitors or cross-contamination during reagent preparation. So we can control with internal control, exogenous, and positive control and no template control. For instrument and data, uh, we need to question about the taking data in the channel is properly, quality of amplification cure, and proper threshold. So we can control with internal control, positive control, and NPC. For interpretation, we need to monitor background, compare PC between run, positive control between run, new load validation, a positivity rate, and other quality indicators. This is example of type internal control and positive control in different reagents. Like for CDC, uh, use rna as or endogenous. So like uh, Aries from Luminex use uh, endogenous. And some of the another uh, mostly uh, uh, reagent utilized of exogenous control. So uh, this type of control not monitor uh, 
something face. So there are positive control, mostly for uh, catfish base. The positive control is not included in the in the kit, and they have different LOD. And false positive and false negative related control results is false positive. We can monitor from fails in NTC, fail in negative control. False negative, fail in positive control, or fail in internal control. So the prevalence and potential false, positive and negative predictive value are highly dependent on the prevalence of the disease in your country. False negative test results are more, li more likely when prevalence is disease high. False positive test results are morally likely when prevalence is moderate low. The most important about the false positive is because contamination. Contamination uh, mostly because introduction of unwanted nuclear acid into the specimens. Why this, uh, the, when the source is uh, contamination, this is a potential source of contamination. Cross-contamination between specimen, amplification product contamination, laboratory surface contamination, ventilation duct contamination, reagent and supplies contamination, or from clothes or lab personnel contamination. And how to control, we can control by three, laboratory designs, laboratory practice, and chemical and enzymatic control. Uh, first, we need to design our laboratory. We can separate by three, three or four area, depend on our lab. This is ideal design for molecular. We design based four room, three room, two room, depend on the what kit we are running. And contamination, uh, we, we, we can uh, remove by chemical uh, and enzymatic barrier. First, all work surface should be cleaned prior to use with uh, DNA away, distilled water, or alcohol. We can add a UV ex exposure in the hood and additional uracil DNA glycosylate. This is uh, additional important to uh, avoid the carryover of PCR product. And to monitor a false positive, we can monitor positivity rate. So we can make a chart of positivity rate uh, per batch and number of cell cluster per matrix, how, how much cluster in our well, especially this example for 90, uh, 96 well. And we can uh, calculate how much, uh, count the, how much the cell cluster per matrix, how big the cluster is, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 12, 12 matrix in the, cell, the, the, largest, the largest cell cluster. We can count the number, how much. And we, we can make based on the uh, prevalence in the, our life. If they, uh, we need to match with our prevalence, if the prevalence like this uh, 15, for 15, so the, the range is 7 to 20 uh, positivity rate per batch. Yeah. So we, we need to uh, count this. And for number of cell cluster, like for 15 uh, prevalence, so only a 0 to 5 cluster. So 0 to 5 cluster. For the size of the larger cells, if the 15, 1 to 6 number of uh, cell per uh, uh, number of size of the, la the largest cluster, only 1 to 6. So we need to uh, design this uh, good uh, play, plating layout too. So we need, it's better if positive control we put in the, uh, the latest of the uh, the latest of the plate, we can separate uh, with NTC2 or we can put together. So to know that there is cross-contamination between a positive control or not. So false negative results may occur if specimen is properly collected, transported, or handled. False negative results may be occur if amplification inhibitor are present in the specimen or inadequate number organism are present in specimen. A positive control and internal control to monitor this false negative. So this false negative related inhibitor, so a lot of inhibitor available, uh, and some came from the 
uh, reagent uh, if we not properly to washing the reagent so the, uh, they become con to inhibitor like for phenol ethanol isopropanol it can be inhibitor or ADTA collagen cellulose uh, hemoglobin as, and other uh, it can be uh, inhibitor uh, for our PCR and they can inhibit in annealing process and or inhibit in DNA polymerase or inhibit the fluorescence dye uh, in our testing and we need external quality assurance for SARS-CoV-2 RNA testing first we can make a from proficiency testing an external provider sand blinded panel at interval that we be treated like a patient sample during testing. On if proficiency testing not available, we need we can recheck or retesting to another national reference laboratory. So sample test by one laboratory or retested by another laboratory, inter laboratory comparisons. Or if we for rechecking or retesting not available we can make on-site evaluation. Indonesia, uh, n mostly we doing this two, two, two type, record mandatory two type, this, this two type. On-site evaluation, uh, so an evaluator will be visit our laboratory to check the laboratory is meeting quality requirement, retested and verify few test results. So ICC recommendation laboratory should participate in relevant quality assurance when possible. So this is external quality assessment uh, or proficiency testing provider for SARS-CoV-2 available in the world, like QCMD, NSTAN, WHO, ECDC, RCPA, A from uh, Singapore, CAP from uh, USA, UK NECAS, Lab Quality, EMKN, Equasta, and L. VC, Seracare, and KK. So a lot of uh, proficiency testing for SARS-CoV-2 available now. And how to choose ECA for SARS-CoV-2 RNA? This is very important because sometimes it's not met with us. Mat we met must be met with across all gene target using a broad range of SARS-CoV-2 RNA assay, especially for wall pathogen. And the second, near, near the limit of detection of the assay, and through the presence of other non sars coronavirus to know the cross-reactivity in our testing. And it's better if we use inactivated and non-infectious and to ensuring safe handling of that material. And this is uh, the, uh, the important tools to maintain quality. So we need a quality indicator. Some quality indicator available is better if we make chart for all this. First, number of specimen tested by specimen type, number per, uh, percentage of positive, negative, and invalid test, and specimen rejection rate, number percent of uh, valid IQC result, and ex external quality excellent uh, PT performance, how much uh, pass, fail, or percent score, and percent result re reported within target soon around time by average and range of TAT and total uh, turn around time. And additional quality indicator is uh, we can make uh, another quality indicator like number of positivity cluster per bed, average and standard deviation CT exogenous internal control in negative sample per bed and per day, average and standard deviation uh, CT positive control per day per week, and average CT positive control and per target per day. And we can make a quality indicator in, and we can make a quality control cut, uh, cut based on CT failure. This is uh, a lot of uh, quality to maintain. Thank you very much for all attendance.